let's try it again. Just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, you may be seated. You say, hey, what, 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 what's going on? Is, is this the end of work? Are, is, are, are we one of them churches now, or we only do one song and a quick sermon and get, get a uh, Happy Meal style? Like, no, like, like, no, everyone just calm down. Just, just, just simmer, get your simmer down now. Trying out something new. I'll explain it here in a second, okay? And, 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 um, and that'll be good. Um, but we are doing kind of an inverted service, and, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you why, okay? Um, and, and it'll make perfect sense, and you'll say, oh, I love the idea. I'm so down with change. Anyways, so, uh, so, that, <laughs> so that'll be great. Um, uh, but first, yes, we are going to be diving into the Word of God. So if you've got your Bibles, actually take them out now. And we are going to be going to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 14. And as you're going there... Um, uh, I will say that Andrea and I just got back uh, from celebrating 14 years of marriage. <laughs> and, um, well, thank you. And we went to, um, uh, we, we, we went to uh, Cancun and we, we laid on the beach all day, every day for like, for like a week, ate delicious um, shrimp tacos and delicious fish talk. I, I ate a ridiculous amount of chips with pico and guac. I, I, I ate enough guacamole to, to, kill a, to kill a small iguana. It was just, it was like, in a, it was just, the ama- like, like for me, like Mexican food, beach, my babe, that's heaven on earth, right? Like, so, it, but, but in, in, in all, and on all honesty, I, I am actually glad uh, to be back. It was a long enough trip where it's like, I, I feel recharged. Hopefully I look re- recharged. Y'all, y'all look recharged. So anyways, that, that's super good. Now, uh, on our way to, to Mexico, um, I actually feel like the, the Lord said that there was going to be a big opportunity. And, and, I, and I don't like big opportunities when I'm on vacation. I, I don't know about you, but like, like, like you know, I, okay, so I'm not exactly Todd White. That's a little obvious. But, um, you know, like... Uh, you know, all the Todd White, you know, that guy doesn't turn off. Listen, I, I have to turn off, okay. Um, I, I have to have my moments when I can unplug from the matrix. Like, like when, when the Lord is like, big opportunity, I'm thinking like, ah, God, I don't really want to do any like ministry on this thing. I just want to eat guacamole and pico and like steak burrito, steak quesadillas. I, I, like, you know, so, but I was keeping my eyes open at least. And, you know, I remember one time I was at the omelet bar, again, eating. <laughs> and, uh... You know, waiting for my omelet, and this guy turned around. He just got his. We locked eyes. I, I like, I saw like the spirit of death on him. I thought, hey, that, that, that's a drug lord. All right, that could be the opportunity. That wasn't the opportunity. The week was coming to an end, and um, my phone rang from a from a from a number I didn't recognize, and so I I I, I did what Jesus would do. I ignored it. It went to voicemail, and then um, and then they sent me a text message. And it was a, a reporter from the Seattle Times and said, uh, hey, Darren, we'd like to um, interview you regarding the election. Now, I've had the Times reach out to me before. I, I haven't had a piece about um, having conversations, you know, with them, with them before. Um, no, fl- no offense. Um, but uh, I, I felt like, hey, um, I think I'm supposed to do this. So I told Andrew, <laughs> I said, hey, this will only be like 15 minutes. Uh, they just want a quick sound bite from me regarding the election. And, um, and so I, I went up. An hour later, <laughs> blood pressure through the roof. Like, I was like, OMG, what did I just say? Right, like, you know, good times. You know, and um, yeah, and I'll tell you what, we, we, had, we, had, we, had a com- we had ourselves a conversation. And so um, that article is going to be coming out um, the Sunday before the election. So that would be uh, next Sunday. So uh, as a church, I would just appreciate your prayers um, uh, for Nina as she's writing her article. And, and, and really, I, I, feel like, I feel like this was the big opportunity that, that the Lord had kind of given me a heads up on. And I'm really praying um, that Jesus would be glorified, that his kingdom would be glorified, and that Seattle Revival Center would look all right uh, through it as well. Um, you know, the thing about it is that, you know, journalism right now is, you know, no offense to all the journalists, but it's a little, it's kind of a, a, a shady Journalism is a little, little shysty right now. Like, 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 you know, like, like, like the thing is, like, a, like within journalism, like, you can form any sort of narrative, no matter, like, you, you can make something, you can make someone say basically kind of anything, and you can kind of frame something out. So, you know, I, I you know, people, I, I, I know there were some people that were a little uh, afraid of 
you know, me talking with, you know, uh, the, you know, South Times, which is definitely a, a highly conservative newspaper. Yeah, so I had nothing to worry about. And, you know, but I felt that, um, you know, like, the worst that could happen is, is I look like a fool. And, um, and that's actually what, what, what Jesus did. And that's actually what Paul did. And that's actually, like, what we're supposed to be down for is that, like, Paul would say, what's the worst that can happen? You kill me? <laughs> I'm already dead, you know. And so, um, anyways, I, I've just determined that I'm not going to fear man. I'm going to fear God. We're just going to go after it and take big risks because that's what Jesus did. So, anyways, but that doesn't mean don't pray. I mean, pray, okay. That would that, be awesome. All right. So, um, everybody there, uh, 1 Corinthians um, uh, chapter 1. Uh, verses 10 to 14, and um, again, if you're just walking into the service and you're like, what is it, daylight savings time, like what, what's going on here? Um, here, here here's what we're going to do. Um, I've, got this, I've got this working theory, and it, it, it's like a wave theory. Everyone familiar with waves, or has it been too long since you've been to the beach? Okay, good. Um, and this wave theory is this, like that each time we come together as a church, there is an opportunity for us to catch a wave together. And I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if, if there's uh, any uh, amazing surfers or if I'm the only one here, but like when you're trying to catch a wave and that thing is building, there, there's a moment where, where that wave is, 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 where it's the appropriate time to stand up. Like, it's a lot of work to catch a wave, okay? Again, it looks like I'm the only surfer here. So it's a lot of work to catch, to catch a wave. But then there's a point where it's no longer any work, and now, and now it's your, now you got to get up. And you gotta ride, you gotta ride the wave. Okay, sometimes in church, okay, um, and I can talk this way because I'm a pastor, I don't want to hear any of you guys talking this way, but like, like sometimes it feels like, like as a church, we're riding a wave on a Sunday morning. And like the, ra- the wave is building and building, and like we're in praise and worship, and right when it feels like it's time to, to get up and to catch the wave, it's like, well, now we're gonna transition into something completely different. You know, so it'd be like as a surfer, about to stand up on your wave, and then you just kind of bail, leave the board, go to Starbucks and have a latte. Now there's nothing wrong with Starbucks, and there's nothing wrong with having a latte. But when that wave is building, and it's time to jump and ride the wave, there cannot be distractions. You cannot bail on one thing and go with another thing, because that's what the agenda says to do. So I've got this working theory that, that there are these opportunities and, um, and my, this, is, this is my theory, that what, is, what, is, what happens when we study the Bible together, when we, stu- when we dive into the Word? Well, um, Jesus said, you would know the truth, and the truth would bring freedom. Now, for a lot of us, throughout the week, we're kind of wallowing in a lot of stuff that doesn't look like truth. And then we come to church, and the, and the worship team is like, all right, guys, are you ready to worship Jesus? And one person's like. <laughs> and then it takes us um, like one or two or three songs of singing truth until we finally start to believe the truth. And then sometimes by the fourth song, we're, we're in. Oh, yeah. But then it's time for the announcement video. Hey, SRC, I noticed you took your mask off. Let's get that back on there. Yeah, let's get that. You know, now. What if we were to begin our services and we dove into the word? What if we began by saying, what's the truth? Knowing that the truth is going to be freedom. So what if the worship wasn't the pre-show for the word? We're just talking here. Okay, we're just, like, like, just, just relax. We're just talking. What if, what if the word of God was helping us prepare our hearts and to align our hearts so that when we're done with studying the word, everything in our being is saying, I'm ready to respond. I'm here with my family. I'm here with brothers and sisters. I know we're totally opposite. I know we would never necessarily hang out on a Friday night, but because we're in this kingdom thing, we've got this same royal DNA, and we are together, and it's like we've all come together and united with truth, and this truth is being freedom, and now I want to 
I want to respond not out of tradition, but now I want to respond out of praise and worship and give of my tithes and my offerings because my treasure, like that's where my heart is and I want to respond by giving of my heart and then we're going to as a family sing to Jesus and we're not just going to sing uh, words on a screen, okay, oh, that, that, that because he, like, like, he's not looking for that kind of worship. He's looking for worshipers who will worship in spirit and in truth. And that means that as we're praising, worshiping Jesus, it's like, I don't care. I mean, I love you, but right now it's not about you. It's about him. And I love me, but right now, and I'm sorry, America, America Church Online, but right now, this ain't about me. It's about him. This is about praising and worshiping him, which means that for the next, like, like for the next, like, like hour or so, I'm going to put me on hold. Hold. Excuse me, can you hold please? And I'm going to take him off of hold. And, and there's a shift so that we're no longer coming to SRC because it's all about me. But we start to come together as a family to declare, look yo, it's all about him. That freedom in Christ is not the same as narcissism. That freedom in Christ means that, that I have died with him, I was buried with him, and now I am alive in him. So I don't have to make this about me. I will use all of this to showcase. We are family. Brothers and sisters are we. So it's like, what if we could not just wait to catch a wave, but what if we as a church woke up, were awakened to our identity and destiny in Jesus Christ, so that we could say like Smith Wigglesworth, if God's hand doesn't move in this service, we will move his hand because we know who we are in Christ Jesus. We are not victims. We have a th we've been through some stuff. But we're not attached to that stuff. We are victorious. Every so often, it'd be okay if you draw your mouth and just give me a little amen, Pastor Dan. It makes me feel good about myself. But like, 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 what if we recognize that every time we come together, we have the opportunity to create, to sustain, and to steward a move of God in this room that can have ripples out into eternity. What if we could do something that could only happen collectively and corporately as a family that not only affects the future, but it affects our past? Church under fire. We're, we're studying the Word of God, doing it, um, uh, expository teaching. What is expository? It means you dive into the Word and you unpack and you honor the Word for what it is. So you can expound on the scriptures, or you can do what's very popular, and it's you take all the drama within the present and you impose your chaos on the word of God. Like when we dive into the book of Corinthians, we don't take the election and impose our Republican or Democrat worldview upon the scriptures. That is to impose. What we do is we dive into the word and we expound it. We say, this is reality. Let that reality impose itself and let it begin to carve out a realm in me so that I'm not taking all my damage and trying to create a, 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 a weird religious realm within the text. So listen, we're in the book of Corinthians. This is a literal letter. It's an ancient text written to a church in Corinth. And this wasn't most likely a mega church. The scholars, they believe this could have been a very small church. In fact, this could have been a church of about 50 people. Why would Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, listen, Paul, right? Kind of a big deal, yeah? Why would he take the time to write a letter to a local church of 50 people? Because this was not an American local church. This was an ecclesia. Meaning that every person in this church had authority and 
influence. And that meant that their decisions mattered. Seattle Revival Stinkin' Center. We have not been called by God to be a cute local church on the side of some corner. We've been called by God, called out to be an ecclesia of governing ones. And every single person in this body has authority and influence. And your decisions matter. Your heart posture matters. Now Paul writes to the, they're small but influential. And, he's, and, and, and he writes, and, 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 our, and our, first, our first study together was Corinthians, I love you. I am thankful for you. That when I think of you, I give thanks to the Lord for you. Uh, I am so proud of you. That was our first week together. And then our second week, Paul says, but Houston, we've got a problem. What's the problem? Division. And then we talked about the wisdom of man, like, in, 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 like the wisdom of God. And Pastor Anthony brought it last Sunday. He did an amazing job. <laughs> and we're going to continue to study today. But you guys, we're still actually talking about the very first problem in Corinth. A problem that we don't have in America. And that's the problem of division. In Corinth, they were divided. Good thing in America, we're not divided. And this is, what, this is what Paul said to the Corinthians. He goes, he goes, the problem is, like, you guys are following all these cats. You know, like, some of you are like, I follow, you know, Cephas. And some of you, I, I, I follow Apollos. And, and he goes, and he even throws himself in the mix. He goes, and some of you are like, I, I follow Paul. Now, how would this look in, in America? They would say, some of you follow Rick Joyner. Some of you follow Bill Johnson. And then he goes, and some of you say, you follow Darren Stott. Yeah, and, 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 and this is what he says, but, but there's a problem because what you have done is you have attached your understanding of wisdom and revelation to them so that when Ian Clayton comes along and he threatens something that Bill said, now I've got to pick a tribe. Division in the first century church, division in the 21st century church, because this is what this is what Paul is saying, is he's saying that their eyes haven't seen. This is what Pastor Anthony talked about last week. Their eyes haven't seen. Talking about himself. Their ears haven't heard. Their imagination has not perceived the things that God has in his heart for you. God bless Rick Stinkin' Joyner. Love Rick. God bless Bill. Love Bill. God bless Darren Stott. Love the dude. God bless Ian Clayton. Love the dude. But we cannot be your source. Because if our revelation is your primary source, you're going to miss out on what God wants to do with you in your generation. Why? Bill hasn't seen. Rick hasn't heard. Darren has not perceived. Ian, pretty crazy guy, he does not have the hack or the trick to get you where God wants you. Why? Because God is not concerned about the outcome. He's concerned about the journey of your heart becoming one with his heart. We're always like, one plus one equals, oh, how do I get to two? I'll just look it up online. Give me the two. Give me the two. Give me the two. And God's like, I want to begin in the beginning with you. I, I don't want you just to have to answer. I want you to discover the equation with me. Because to the Lord, the equation is just as beautiful as the answer. So that was last week. Their eyes haven't seen. These people that you say are so wise, these people that you are subscribing to and follow, honor them. That is so awesome. But look at this, verse 10. These things God has revealed, everyone say revealed, to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. This is, <laughs> this is what Paul's saying. Your Spirit knows what's up. 
listen, you're, you're, you're trying to find all these new things, all these new books. I'm going to go to this new conference. Yay. But Paul says, you don't need a conference. Why? You need to consult with your spirit. Why? Because your spirit knows what's up. Just declare it right now. Say, my spirit, my spirit knows what's up. And he's talking, he's talking to believers in Corinth. He's talking to believers. Why? Because believers are receivers. That when you believe in the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. When you, when you make Jesus your Savior, you believe. And then what do you do? You receive the Holy Spirit who then comes and kavaz with your spirit. You know that there's no separation between your spirit and the spirit of Christ Jesus that are now kavaing, that are now uh, intertwining, that there can now no longer be any separation between your spirit and his spirit. This is what he says, these revelations these mysteries, they have been revealed, unfolded through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Just declare my spirit. Look at the person next to you, just say, my spirit. It knows what's up. Verse 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except for the spirit of that person, which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God. Did you know, this is going to blow your mind. Did you know that your spirit knows your thoughts? Yeah. Why is that mind blowing? Because if you didn't have a spirit, you'd be dead, decaying meat. You are alive. Because of the Spirit of God. In the, I'll, I'll take you back to the beginning. In the beginning, God spoke everything into being, right? He just spoke it, and there it was, but not Adam and Eve. Like, when God created Adam, what did he do? He didn't speak. He came down, he began working. Sorry, millennials, but God works. Work isn't a bad thing. So anyways, um, he, began, he came in... <laughs> God, God started working, playing in the dirt, okay, playing in the dirt. And then what did he do? He breathed his spirit into the dirt, and it became an image bearer. He created man and woman in his own image and likeness. He breathed. He said, this is my spirit, and I'm giving you the gift of spirit. I'm giving you the gift of Life and light that one day, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, you can Google this, um, explosion in the womb upon conception. This isn't from a Christian thing. This is, this is from the scientific journals that when the sperm penetrates the egg, there is a literal explosion of light that can be seen with microscopes. So that when there's life, there's an explosion. What is that? That is the... And I'm gonna, I hope this doesn't offend you. I hope you have the maturity to, to, to ride this little rabbit trail with me. But like the original breath from God in Adam has been passed on, passed on, passed on, passed on. And now your ability to be conscious and alert and aware of your thoughts, that that, that breath, that life, that light, that when we, when we pass away, the lights turn out. I don't know if you've ever seen someone that has passed away, but their eyes are open, but no one's there. The original spark is no longer there. It's not that the spirit is dead. It's that it's upgraded. This earth suit, it's on loan. Don't get me wrong, it's a holy temple, and Paul will talk about that. But this is on loan, and you are aware of everything that you're aware of because of the original breath, the original consciousness, the original spirit, God's spirit, him, his ruach, his, I'm building something, I'm going face to face with it, and then I'm going to, I'm going to share my life into the dirt and bring it out as an image bearer. I'll skip my illustration, it's not needed, that was more powerful. Okay, it says, you're aware of your 
you're aware of your thoughts because of your spirit. That's what, but this is likewise true of the Holy Spirit. That is the life force, the very consciousness, the very person. It's the very spirit of Christ. Jesus himself knows the thoughts of God. And this spirit, this friend, you have received because when you believed, you received the record of the one that knows all things. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit of God who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Now, we have received not the spirit of this world. This is really interesting. Because a lot of us, when we talk about the world, we've got enough kind of religious programming where we think about that's the spirit of of smoking cigarettes, that's the spirit of bingo parlors, that's the spirit of women who wear makeup, that's the spirit of, like, worldly, fleshy, like, that's the spirit of, you know, uh, worldly, that's like Christians that sip wine, like, worldly, worldly, fleshy, disgusting, yuck, we have not received, spirit. that is not what that means. I know, because some of you got really offended when I said you couldn't wear makeup, all right, so what it says, <laughs> That we have not received the, the word world, okay, that word in the Greek is cosmos. So this is what he's saying. There are two mindsets. There's the spirit and understanding that comes from above. True wisdom. Remember the whole context here? Some of you follow Paul. Some of you follow Cephas. Some of you say, I follow Apollos. I, I say they have not seen, they have not heard, they do not know. That which has been revealed to you by the Spirit. For we have not received the wisdom attached to the cosmos. What does that mean? The cosmos is not bad things. The cosmos are created things. For we have not received the attachment and tethering to the definition of wisdom, which according to the, the cosmic kairos understanding of wisdom is the accumulation of data that has been received from learning through experience or somebody else's experience. You see, in the church, a lot of us would say wisdom is the accumulation of data from one's life or some. The problem with that is you're attaching yourself, you're tethering wisdom and the definition to that which comes from created things. He says, you have not received the kind of wisdom attached to the record of created things. For in doing so, that's what leads to your original division. Why? Because if I am going to define wisdom as the accumulation of data from this person that says that he has lived it, but then somebody else comes and says, I am in disagreement with their assessment, now my heart is divided because I have to pick a tribe. And now, practically and functionally, I have now elevated one of these guys to a place of being my own functional savior. Why? Because I am declaring my understanding from created things. Idols are not bad things. Idols are good things that we elevate to become our source. All division in the church and in America, all racist conversations, political conversations, comes from one thing. Idolatry. The elevating of good ideas to God ideas where we are declaring Jesus as our Savior but bowing down practically to the idea of someone, some person, some publication that's just a created thing. You are tethered to the accumulation of data from a created thing. And in doing so, you are missing out on the revelation needed for you to step into your, your identity and destiny in Jesus. That destiny is being forfeited. Why? Because you have elevated the opinion of man over revelation that can only come from the mind of God himself. For we have not received the disposition of chronos timelines. We honor the timeline. We honor the generals. But we know they cannot be 
our source. Darren cannot be your source. Seattle Revival Center cannot be your source. Donald Trump, my God, cannot be your source. The political system, which most days makes me want to vomit in my mouth, cannot be our source of hope. Donald Trump will not make America great again. And Biden will not be the end of America, despite what Fox News tells you. Why? Because the ultimate authority is God himself. America not a, is not a man's idea. America was God's idea. And if you want to be relevant, st stop asking what people want. If you want to be relevant, find out what God wants. We have understanding from the things freely given to us by God. That's what he says. Engage with wisdom, with real wisdom, which isn't just a bunch of thoughts from dead white guys. Real wisdom comes from God. And when you receive that wisdom, it will unveil internally and intuitively the full benefits package from above. And because you got it from him, you'll have the faith to activate the entire benefits pack. Listen, if I get good revelation of healing from a man, the faith is not necessarily, the, the batteries don't always come with the toy. But if you get it from God, it don't need batteries. Verse 13, and we impart in the words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. Everyone declare, I. Because it says we, and we means me. Look at the person next to you and say, me, I. Impart in words. Words are powerful. There was a great person that once said, preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use words. I would say if you're not using words, you're not imparting the gospel. Take words out of the equation, and there's no nothing. There's no atoms, there's no you and I, that in the beginning, God spoke. If you're not speaking, you're not creating. And if the enemy's telling you that it's not your role to speak, then you've believed a lie that you are not created in the image and likeness of God. You are creating what you're speaking. And what's also interesting is that in Genesis 1, that many scholars say that God did not only spoke, he sang. That Genesis 1, it looks like Hebrew poetry. And the idea is that God took the desires and contents of his heart and he sang it into being. I subscribe to that. You, you don't have to, it does, it, you know, but it, it, this is something fun that I subscribe to. Why? Because our beliefs determine our behaviors. And so when you believe something like this to be true, that every time I sing, I am declaring a realm into being. That every time I speak, I am creating a contrasting reality that others who do not even believe get to be participants and receivers of blessing in the same way that God spoke and created something um, that we all get to receive from. He created the sun to give us light. What are you creating for the next generation? Declare, I, because we means me, we impart in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. You've got a teaching in you that you didn't rip off from somebody on YouTube. Not that we would. You've got a teaching in you that's from above, and it's impartable, it's multi-generational, and it is given through the gift of speech and song. Through, through art, we speak. Through mathematics, we speak. Through design, we speak. That when we are teachers, when we are CPAs, when we are, that when we are painting pictures, that we are releasing a word because a picture is worth a 
We impart the nature and character of God. We impart this, this storyline of the gospel that you have been, I don't care what you've been told by some sort of religious fat lie that you don't have authority. This is not a local church. This is an ecclesia, which means every person has authority and influence that is multi-generational and it is imparted through your word through your testimony, that they overcame the enemy with the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, which is spoken and demonstrated. Verse 14, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of God as to instruct him? But, they won't say, but, 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 but. No, just say, but. <laughs> Don't get tricky with it, just say, but. But we. We means me. Look at the person next to you say, we means you, honey. Wake up, wake up. We means you. What about me? We have the mind of Christ. We means me. I have access to, not the disposition of accumulated knowledge as tethered to the cosmos. I am now attached to a new source. I have, I have the mind of God. I have access to the thoughts of God. And what does that mean? That doesn't mean that you have to pray to get the mind of God. Why? Because when you believed, you received. If the, if the worship team wants to come, well, what we're going to do here in a second is we're going to take all of this truth and we're going to let it slow cook in our spirits and we're going to hold it in until we can't hold it anymore. And then we're going to respond. Why? Because knowledge in and of itself is just going to puff you up. You can leave this service today and be like, well, gosh, I didn't know that. <laughs> now I'm like smarter than other believers. <laughs> yeah. No, wrong. Uh, knowledge puffs up. But guess what? If we can respond, if something can become activated in us, then all of a sudden there is a boldness, there is a courage. There is, there is this, this place of, that, of receiving the gift with the power from on high. It's not the toy without the batteries. It's everything you need to be effective and obedient and powerful on the earth. What do we do? We take all of this. And we say, Father, I give thanks to you for who you are and for this process that I am in. And now I take everything that I am and I respond. Lord, allow your word to become activated in me. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll respond by giving of our, our tithes and our, our, our offerings. By taking this treasure within our hearts and we'll, we'll put it in these, in these bowls here and in a moment, we're going to sing together as the family of God in one of the most important years in human history. In one of the most important Sundays that you've ever come into this room. With one of the most important sermons that I've ever preached being right here. Why? Because I'm not lusting after tomorrow. I'm giving thanks for this precious gift from God that is good and perfect called today. Called right now. And we will sing together, and we will connect with God, and we will connect with this spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells within you, and we will do today what you couldn't have done yesterday. As a family, we will connect in spirit and in truth, and we will ride this wave together. We will connect with the Lord. We will connect with His spirit. And as we sing, 
principalities that have dominated even generational family lines will start getting untethered and start start popping that even even addictions and principalities of thought will just start will just start changing and shifting that that even that even like pain in people's bodies that that, that is linked to a spirit of infirmity will get cast out and I, I believe that that people will even get get healed and we'll, we will ride this wave together knowing that if this is the last Sunday that we ever have uh, together that God is good that God is faithful and he deposited the seed that we need right now to go and to demonstrate his kingdom authority and power that everything you need can be found in his perfect spirit that has been seated if you say I don't have that believe and you will receive Say, I don't have this empowerment. Believe on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be, you will be saved. Believe, and you'll receive this spirit. And for those of you that we've been saved for such a long time that we've forgotten who we are. We've forgotten whose we are. And we've forgotten that we've been called for such a time as this. Even as we sing, that spirit of Christ Jesus, that spirit of awakening can come and bring illumination and a reminder that God can do in the next three months more than he's done the last 30 years of your life. Can I tell you how I'm praying for Seattle Revival Center right now? I'm praying that God would break the script. I'm praying that God would take Seattle Revival Center off of cruise control. I'm praying that we would no longer host meetings where if Holy Spirit doesn't show up, it's still a good meeting. I'm praying that, 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 that we can begin to function and move together as a body. That we can begin to do the stuff. That we can begin, that we would have a radical, I'm praying that God breaks the script and then he breaks it again. And that we would have, that we would not be able to, according to our chronos logic, and according to our, our, our cosmic understanding of wisdom, that we, that our human compasses would not work where the Lord is taking us, that we would have to trust in Him, that we would have to rely on Him, that we would have to lean into Him. The greatest days of your life you have not lived yet. The greatest things that you have ever seen you have not seen. Your eyes have not seen. Your ears haven't heard. Either of theirs. Your imagination has not dreamt of the things he has in his heart for you. But they have already been revealed by his spirit to your spirit. And now it's time to begin to discern the data. It's time. It's time. It's time. Just say it. It's time. It's time. Stinking time. It's time. I've waited for this. I have waited. It's time. I've waited. I've waited. I've waited. It's time. It's time. Now's the time. SRC, wake up. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now's the time. My heart is beating. My blood is pumping. For this time. For this time. Blind eyes will see. Mute tongues will sing. The lame will leap like a, a deer, not because of Pastor Darren, but because of Christ Jesus, the hope of glory that's been seated inside of you. I'm talking, I'm talking to you. I'm talking, look at the person next to you and say, we means me. We means me. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. We're, we're going to respond with our, with our giving, and then we're going to sing, and then we're going to do a little bit of body ministry, building up the body with prophetic words, words of exhortation from the body of Christ. And then we're going to leave this place, and we're going to have better services during the week than we had today. Releasing the glory of God with an impartation from our word, our words of life. Father, I thank you and I give you praise for each and every family represented here, each and every son, each and every daughter. I give you thanks and I give you praise for the lives that have been changed in, in this place because of the precious blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that is alive, the blood of Jesus that is even in this atmosphere, the blood of Jesus that speaks and reframes reality. I thank you, Jesus, that your name is big, it is powerful, that you are the king of all, of, of all kings, that you are the Lord above all lords, you are the president above all presidents. Lord, we thank you, God, that the kingdom of God is here for such
such a time as this. I thank you, God. The kingdom of God is at hand. 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 I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a son. I'm a son of another realm. Of another. I'm just passing through. I'm not going to be here very long. But while I'm here, I will do everything that I can, short of sinning, to see his glory come, to see his kingdom come, to see his will be done on earth in Seattle and King County as it is in heaven grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ God bless you